Um, we'll continue to work um, uh, really quickly. We are also, um, you know, in service of this, uh, making sure that we are moving forward for next year's sports season. That's a great thing to tell the 50 people who watched this video. August 11th of 2024, Don Fall is on record saying this. We appreciate your patience and support as we conduct this process. We will provide transparency around the investigation as it progresses. We will provide transparency around the situation as it progresses. That's over two months ago. I believe that I'm about as plugged in as anybody is in the CrossFit space when it comes to the things that come out of Don Fall's mouth, but I don't think that we've heard very much. What else you got? We want to acknowledge that our decision put athletes in a very difficult position. You do say the word our decision. From what I recall, the athletes were put up to a vote and it's like the athletes wanted it to go, so we went. The weird transparency issue there. Anything else? We will continue to provide updates as they become available. So this is on a public YouTube page. Remember they put this up on the public YouTube page, August 11th, over two and a half months ago, after the passing of Lazar Dukic. The video is about two minutes and eight seconds long, and since I think the major thing that everyone may have seen was that CrossFit Invictus, where Don's in front of a whole bunch of people talking about where the company will kind of be going. I know that's where they referenced the CrossFit Training YouTube page. But what I'm about to show you is from September 5th, posted to the CrossFit YouTube page on September 10th. But I bet you didn't see it. He's telling everybody they're gonna be as transparent as possible publicly. We will provide transparency around the investigation as it progresses. Is that what you think? And then this one isn't really so public. But like always, got my dirty little YouTube fingers on it, so we're gonna go through Don Fall's update on the situation. First off, everyone's favorite person, Mr. DeCoons. And uh, you're gonna hear from Don with some updates. Um, and that's enough for Mr. DeCoons. What you got, Don? Well, hey everyone, thanks for joining today. Um, I wanted to start with um, sharing a few updates on what we've been working on since um, uh, the tragic uh, event that happened at the games this year. Um, we're going to be sharing an update more broadly with the community in a few days um, uh, to talk about kind of what we've been working on in kind of three areas and wanted to just uh, give you guys kind of a preview of that. Like I told you, this is from September 5th. Said that there would be an update. From what I understand, there hasn't been an update. The one to the public on the YouTube page is over two and a half months ago. This one is over a month and a half ago. But what are these three things you want to touch on? Um, and, and again, you should expect to kind of see more as we distribute that. Um, uh, so first priority for us in, in, in the wake of um, the, the tragic events at the games this year was making sure we do everything in our power to understand exactly what happened. Um, we uh, immediately hired a, a third-party investigator. Now, the major thing that I know about the third-party investigator I actually found out through constantly varied conversations. That's John Woolley's second channel. Something along the lines of the U.S. Border Patrol is a sponsor for the 2024 CrossFit Games. Peter Edge, who I think is the guy, as far as what I recall, is the one running that third-party investigation, has some sort of affiliation with that Border Patrol, and it becomes some sort of weird conflict of interest. Um, to start uh, an, an investigation, um, uh, to gather all the necessary information to understand exactly what happened. That investigation is now underway, uh, making progress. Um, that person is gathering information, doing interviews. Um, we expect uh, to have more uh, to share in the coming weeks on that front. So uh, I know a lot of folks are, are uh, have a lot of questions about what happened and, and we're doing our best to work as quickly as we can. This might be a great point for him where he says the word folks. He's talking to the affiliates here. I believe this is an affiliate call. That becomes more and more interesting as we listen to him. Because he's currently talking about a CrossFit game situation, which I know had an effect on the affiliates, but it is a CrossFit affiliate call. Uh, to make sure that we have a, a really accurate and comprehensive understanding um, of what happened so that we can move forward appropriately and give our athletes and the community confidence in the path forward. Athletes on the affiliate call. Mm-hmm, good. Um, separate and, and apart from what happened at the games this year, uh, over the last few weeks, we've heard a lot from folks in the community, um, from athletes, from other members of the community who have shared uh, their perspective, feedback, uh, kind of experience in and around sport, um, their experience over the course of the last um, uh, years, again, independent of, of what happened at the games this year. One of my major criticisms of Don during the games, all of this was going on, was that there was no seemingly decision made, which was put on the CrossFit YouTube channel that I played at the beginning of this episode, where he says, our decision is interesting because the way it was presented was that the athletes played a large role in our decision, their decision. And again, now he says that he's talking to all of these people, the athletes included, which really makes me think that it isn't ever going to be a decision of a 
true leader. Let's crowdsource an idea on what we're going to do to move forward is what I hear him saying here. Um, some of those uh, perspectives have been shared publicly in social media. Um, uh, and and uh, we want to make sure that uh, we have the opportunity to hear that feedback as well. And so over the last couple of weeks, um, I've been spending a, a ton of my time talking directly to athletes, um, talking to some owners, talking to coaches, talking to other members of the community to, to listen and gather feedback. Um, so at this point, I've talked to a few dozen folks. Um, uh, again, some folks who have shared their perspectives publicly, some folks who are not comfortable doing so. And again, the goal there is making sure that we have an opportunity to really listen uh, and hear feedback. Sounds like counseling. What, what I'm really thinking here is they have the third party investigation going on, whatever that might mean, because they really haven't said what exactly that means. But, but how many people really need to be interviewed for stuff like that or like this? You have to make a decision on how to move forward with your company. And you're talking to the athletes and you're telling the affiliates this. I know it's apples and oranges, but what if you heard Steve Jobs or Jeff Bezos going like, yeah, we talked to the average everyday consumer of the MacBook. Dude, it flames on it. Amazon, yeah, I think they should be using drones. And then before you know it, there's just dead birds everywhere because the drones are just attacking the birds. Um, over the course of the next couple of weeks, we're going to continue to invest in that process and we're actually going to expand and build on uh, that listening a little bit more. Um, Want to make sure that we have the opportunity to hear from everyone. Again, he's on an affiliate call. He said, we're going to invest more into the listening process. They're taking your $4,500 a year and they're spending it on investing into the thing that they already pay for in the first place. And that's the CrossFit games. Um, uh, to, to make sure we have a, a kind of accurate and representative understanding of uh, uh, kind of perspectives on sport across the community. Um, and there's really three areas, kind of themes where um, we are uh, kind of listening, gathering feedback where folks are sharing. Um, the first area for us is really in and about just how we manage the season, how we manage the sports season, what that looks like. And, and hey, affiliate owners, we have three things we want to talk to you about, and it's kind of all about the sports season. Uh, for us, the sports season broadly, obviously, it begins at the Open, it ends with the games and includes our elite athletes, it also includes members of our community who participate in the Open. It includes our age group, adaptive, uh, and um, uh, teen athletes as well. And what about the world's most vexing problem, Don? Uh, the second area is uh, really in and about how do we communicate and work with our athletes, all of our athletes? Um, how do we gather feedback? How do we make decisions? How do we update them? Yeah, the best source of updating people is probably through a video that has 50 views on your YouTube channel. Huh? Um, most effectively over the course of the season. And then in the, the third area is really about just listening and getting perspective on the potential evolution of sport. Sport, sport, sport. Those are the three things you want to talk about, huh? I make a video about how there's maltodextrin and LMNT. You make a video about sport. I remind everybody that CrossFit isn't theoretically low carb by updating everybody on the CrossFit level one. You go and interview dozens of people whose opinions you probably shouldn't be listening to anyway. Um, what does that look like? Um, um, how do folks feel about that? Um, how can and should sport best serve our overall community? That's a very Eric Rosa-esque take, isn't it, Don? Isn't it crazy that Greg kind of wanted the games to just go away? That's why he shut down the media team in the first place. There was too much of an emphasis put on the game season. Is that the biggest difference between Greg and Don and maybe even Rosa? Thank you so much for what you did with the sport. I believe were Eric Rosa's famous words to Sevon. I believe. I don't know if I have that quite right. But right here, very similar thing that you're hearing from Don. Um... We're going to continue to have these conversations. I'll continue to meet uh, individually with athletes um, uh, across our elite athletes, masters, age group, teen athletes. We've done that. I was, I was in Birmingham this past weekend, got a chance to meet with some athletes in person. Uh, and our affiliate council actually will be facilitating conversations with affiliate owners um, to get your perspective on, on sport, what you'd like to see, and again, how sport can best serve our community moving forward. Um, what I'll say through all of this, and, and, and as we think about, um, you know, the answers to all of these questions, recognizing that sport for us serves our community. That's like the third time you've said this, but you're not really saying how, you're just saying how the affiliates are going to be funding that serving process. Um, and our community is what's happening inside your affiliates. And so we want to make sure that as we think about sport and how it evolves and where we invest. I'm glad that he pretty promptly followed up the part where I said how you are funding the sport, the thing that serves the community with the word invest. Uh, and how we best support it moving forward. Um, that it is best serving the work that you're doing, changing lives uh, in your gyms. And so 
that affiliate point of view and perspective is really important um, and, and appreciate the folks who have, have already shared their feedback and, and we'll make sure that uh, we continue to have those conversations. Um, the third area that we've been working on. You've, you've already said. And then in the, the third area is really about just listening and getting perspective on the potential evolution of sport. Um, the third area that we've been working on is for the folks who are on site and affected at the games. Um, we wanted to make sure they had access to the support they needed. This is this this is the fourth area, isn't it? Is for the folks who are on site and affected at the games. Um, we wanted to make sure they had access to the support they needed. So. Uh, immediately in, in uh, the immediately during the games itself and the aftermath, we followed up with some mental health resources. We have lined up now some ongoing resources for folks who are there and on site um, uh, to make sure and don't have access to mental health resources. We've lined those up and we're, we're distributing those directly to folks. I know I have the um, uh counter at the top left of the screen, but I really should have put a folks. How many times have you said the word folks? <laughs> And I'm also hearing resources. Resources, resources, resources. Resources inherently isn't a word that is cheap. It's like you're playing Oregon Trail way back in grade school and you need all of these resources so that you survive the cold winter. And he's saying that they provided resources. And who do you think is paying for those resources? Someone out there is gonna be like, they were free services. Nothing in life is free. Um, shortly to make sure that they're kind of supported and taken care of. Um, we'll continue to work um, uh, really quickly. We are also, um, you know, in service of this, uh, making sure that we are moving forward for next year's sports season. That's a great thing to tell the 50 people who watched this video. But again, like I showed in the beginning of this, there were 70,000 people that watched that video that you put up on August 11th. There are 70,000 people who probably want to know that you are moving forward with the sports season, like you said right there. I darn well bet that 49 out of the freaking 50 of them that watch this don't care. But hey guys, here's the official word that there will be a sports season from Donfall right here, right now. You're welcome. Um, you guys should, we're hard at work on that front um, um, and uh, expect to hear more from us uh, in the coming weeks on that front as well. All right, it's been about five weeks. Coming weeks, what does that mean? I think two or three, but I guess in theory, it could mean 10 to a thousand weeks. Um, so thank you guys, appreciate it. I know for a lot of folks, the past few weeks have been a really hard time for the community. Really appreciate um, all the support, um, all the work that you do. Um, and, and so really grateful for, for everything that you guys are doing every day. All right, Jay, I'll hand it back over. Thank you, Don. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for that. So a couple updates I just want to tick through for you guys. Um, yeah, I just want to hear from Don, Jay, but thank you for being here. Oh, well. And uh, I, really, I really enjoy the scenery. It looks like you're hanging out in your suburban. That faux background thing that you got going on. No, it's not fooling anybody, but that's a fantastic automobile. Before we wrap, if there's, yep. um, if there aren't a, a additional questions, um, uh, first, I just wanted to say thanks again for everything you guys do. I will be, for folks who can make it to the uh, San Diego Summit and the New York Summit, um, I'll be there. So look forward to saying hello in person. Um, also wanted to, something I should have mentioned more explicitly a little bit earlier. So the work we are doing right now around the investigation, around these conversations, are really about um, gathering the information necessary to inform the decisions we'll make going into next season. So we should expect in the coming weeks as we work through that, we'll come back to the community and communicate what does next season look like? What have we heard from the community? What are the changes that we're making uh, moving forward? So coming weeks again, it's been over a month since this video was put up. It's almost been two months since this video has been put up. What are the decisions to be made moving forward? Maybe we will see that in the coming weeks. Um, we're working through that as quickly as we can. We want to make sure we, we get the, get the facts, get the necessary information to inform those decisions. And then you guys will hear more from us on that point. So I know I'm no Peter Edge. I know that I'm no expert, but what I really think would need to be nailed down, figured out would be, Hey, we're in Texas. What are the rules and regulations about having a water event in Texas? Were those rules and regulations hit? Did somebody ignore those rules and regulations? If they were ignored, why were they ignored? Is it because perhaps like Don himself said, they were cutting money on the CrossFit games. They were hamstrung. Is it really, is it just private equity's fault for not giving money to the CrossFit games to have the event? I don't really know why you gotta talk to some podunk person on the sideline who was just sitting there in the water and they're gonna tell you the same thing. I didn't see anything, but I don't feel good about it. You got a hundred people telling Peter Edge that they don't feel really good about it. I was like, well, no crap, nobody feels good about it. How does that affect the investigation? How do, you, how do your feelings play into it? Um, appreciate it. Um, I know folks are kind of eager to hear what next season looks like and uh, the team's working really hard to that end. So um, thanks again for the feedback. Uh, thanks for your patience as you work through it. And thanks for the work you're doing to 
to support your your local communities. So far, we have about seven minutes of Don here. We have 120 uh, ums, a whole bunch of folks, and the rest of it is spent thanking everybody while saying, hey, we have no updates for you, with a major update being that there will be a sports season, which many people probably don't even know yet. Uh, so Megan, there's a, I see Megan has a question about, will information be provided to affiliate owners first in regards to that investigation? Um, we will, uh, we'll figure out, I think that we haven't figured out exactly what the timing is around the communication, what we try within a few weeks, and we're going to get it to you as soon as we can sign Don fall. What we try to do is have a generally for stuff like this, a, a direct, uh, communication to you guys first. It probably won't be a huge gap because once we communicate with the affiliate community, it effectively gets communicated to the rest of the community. So, so why are you even saying yes in the first place? Just announce it to everybody, like you did with the freaking YouTube video. Seventy thousand people hear it just as once. You can say no to this chick asking. I don't even remember her name. It's cool that they have direct access to Don to ask these questions, but it seems like he just has to say yes. Oh yeah, we'll give it to you first, but there's really nothing we can do about it from there. We'd love to have you. We want to. We want. We want you to have it first. But come on, let's be real. So just say no. We're gonna tell everybody all at once. I think you should. Explain expect you will hear from us directly an update on what that looks like. We'll make sure that information is in your hands and that'll probably be fast followed then with broader communication to the rest of the community on what next season looks like. Um, th there's a, uh, a follow-up question as well around, um, you know, who is supporting HQ on kind of public relations related to investigation. Um, uh, we do have support on that front. So we are, we are working with uh, an expert um, to kind of advise us on how to most effectively kind of handle communication on, on in situations like this. Is she telling you to just wait as long as possible to not say anything and uh, hide everything behind a freaking 50 view YouTube video? Because that's money well spent, Don. And I say money because you use the word expert. And like I said, nothing's cheap. And if you want to throw the word expert onto somebody, you better well assume that they're spending at least $200,000 a year to pay that salary. We brought them in. All right, well, that's probably even more expensive. $40,000 consultation. What is that? 10 affiliate fees. whoop de doo for the expert opinion on when we're going to release this information, when it's just releasing information or not releasing information. It takes a leader to to do the job of an expert, but you're paying an expert to do the job of a leader. And in any sense of it, it's being done poorly. I will acknowledge that as it relates specifically to the investigation, until the investigation's done and we've actually gathered the full story, we can't be out talking about specifics and details. It, it'd be inappropriate. So we have a period of time when our, our focus right now is moving as quickly as we can to get the investigation done, to get it done properly, um, you know, make sure that we have as accurate an understanding as we can, and that'll put us in a position to understand the be best path moving forward on that. Uh, Wouldn't it really just be best practice to say we can't talk about it right now? There's probably action items you can talk to about the affiliates outside of this. I know this question was presented right here, but this is all like very fluffy talk, and you could have just said, we can't talk about that. We'll tell you when we can. That's all you got to say. Uh, but we do have um, someone who's advising us who we're working really closely with to do the best job we can handling uh, communication around, around this whole situation. And just building on that, Jay, specifically around kind of media, we'll have, um, we'll have Jenna, our, our CMO, come talk about it. The, um, through the back half of the year, the two areas of focus on, on media. So we, you will see more media. Um, and it's going to be specifically around affiliates and around education. Those are going to be the two areas of focus. And we are also doing some additional work on, on YouTube where we'll have a, 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 a additional channel dedicated specifically to, to education and creating more content there. So we'll, uh, we'll plan for a future update to have the team come and talk about that and give you guys a sense for what that's going to look like. Uh, and hopefully in advance of that call, you should start to see some, some more of that uh, media and content. Thank you. So we've seen it. CrossFit Training YouTube channel is just shy of 10,000 subscribers at this point in time. They've done some live videos. Something I remember when Suzo was talking about the Invictus meeting that Don had done with all those affiliate owners out there is that there was a word used. It's like a, a plan when you use something for the foreseeable future, but YouTube isn't really a foreseeable future thing. It's a forever deal. And the reason I'm saying all of this is because if they're planning on doing something for four or six months and they're doing pretty good right now, but they need to be doing this 
for years, live videos for years, new content about movements for years. And eventually that'll start to pick up traction. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill. The unfortunate thing that the CrossFit training channel is doing right now is it's showing how potent CrossFit is in the fitness space, in the internet space in general. When a company this size, or the size that everybody thought that CrossFit was, opens up a YouTube page, shares on all of their social platforms, on Instagram, they've got millions of followers. You'd hope that it could pick up more than 10,000 subscribers. I looked at this guy, his name is Greeny. We got the first ever outdoor summer hockey rink. Some stupid TikTok guy who's pretty funny. Every single one of the videos that Greeny from TikTok has put up have surpassed the CrossFit training YouTube channel. And that's no reason to be discouraged because Greeny has been active on TikTok for a long time. But it doesn't incite much confidence to see this new YouTube channel getting beat out by a single individual from a TikTok channel. And I could make an entire freaking video. And maybe I will make an entire freaking video. Their titles and thumbnails are so bad. It's like they have my grandpa running the freaking page and he's in a coffin. You unloaded 170 movement videos on the first day and haven't put up one in six days since. Do you really think that lateral hop over a kettlebell was worth it? A nine second video which is formed horizontally and if anything could have been done as a short so it's given to more people in the proper nine second domain. I could go on all day about this. This was meant to be about Don. That's all I got to say. Andrew Hiller out.